The hardest injury a fan has had at a D's Nuts show from memory. Uh, nothing's really Not, coming to mind. I've heard about, I don't think. No, there's definitely been like some injuries, obviously. I, we saw a kid <laughs> get butt naked and stage dive and no one called him because he was naked. I think he would have maybe scratched his penis or something. Like our shows are usually more uh, focused on fun and uh, like people sort of having a party. I broke my ankle or like said shit like that. I don't know. There's definitely been like fucking like teeth in the pit and like, you know, like stories of injuries, but that doesn't like it doesn't stand out in our memories as much as say like someone jumping up on stage like with a dick out or something. Like, you know, those are the things that really stand out in my mind. Yeah, yeah that's many injuries. We're doing, we're a safe band. More nudity and less injuries at these Nuts concerts. Thank you. Ooh, that's a tough question. You're going to get us in trouble. Uh, well, ugh, I'd rather not answer that. I, I, yeah, I, that's. I, I do like both of them, but I, but I, you know, I also have my opinions on who I respect more, and it's, 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 I don't know. We don't like to be fence sitters, but in something like that, it's very personal, and we like uh, live in a world where we have to like, you know, play shows with these people and stuff. So I don't want to really like, you know, pick sides and shit, you know. Maybe that were too expensive to book in Japan. We just want to go. Just take us. We've been trying to go to Japan since the like inception of the band, and there's some kind of crazy rumors flying around that we like want so much money that it's impossible to book us there. But we really will go just for like flats. We just want to go. We just want to have a good time, experience the food and the culture, and have a nice time playing some shows. So if any Japanese promoters are out there watching, we don't want too much money. We just want to have some fun. That's a hard no. Censorship is forbidden. We probably have like one, two, three. Beers as a thing would just be one, right? Individual points, you have a couple just for beers. If each beer was an individual point. I would say we have like less than 10. We, we basically ask for like enough food to get us through the couple of hours that we're waiting to play and then like a lot of liquor to get us through the night, the show and the following morning. So like as long as there's like three bottles of liquor and maybe like a bag and of Doritos. This has made it and we, we have, have the shit he put on it we don't even fucking use. He used it and he didn't use it because he was always so fucking high. There's always, like, you know, we always have, like, two tubs of... <laughs> mind that I said that. Uh, we got, like, two tubs of Greek yogurt and, like, some cucumbers. I never get it. This is our mixes of our new record. Yeah. I have we have a new record coming out, and we're, like, right deep in the process of getting the mixes finalized so that we can deliver them for, like, our deadline, so... As much as we would love to listen to a lot of other amazing music that's out there, like our sole focus right now is listening to our new album over and over and over and over again. So yeah, right now it's just listening to us. Sure. Yes, I do. My first concert ever was Glassjaw. Uh, I don't know, I was probably like 12 years old. So that's 20 years ago. Yeah, that was sick. But that was when they were, that's like Worship and Tribute just came out and they were like touring all the times before he got sick. He was like still straight edge and shit. So. Being from Australia, not a lot of bands are touring around the time that I got into hardcore. So my first hardcore shows were local bands, uh, seeing bands like Day of Contempt and Embodiment. Uh, you probably wouldn't have heard of them, but they were a big deal in Adelaide, South Australia. So yeah, that's the first shit that I've seen. Um, does it count as festivals? Yeah. We saw H2O last night. We always, we always get to see them. I went to a show when I was home. I went to see the story so far when I was home. They're not a hardcore band, but they you don't really want to, uh, not that you don't want to go see hardcore bands, but I think playing in a heavy band, you just, you know, you get your taste evolves. Obviously, as you get older, anyway, 
and they're one of my favorite bands, and they're the boys too, so it was fun to like go see something different. I don't want to see any shows when I'm at home. Like I spend eight months of the year playing music and being surrounded by live music, which I love, and I'm blessed to be able to do that. But I like to spend all the months that I'm not doing that, being far, far away from live music and spending it with my family. So yeah. Festivals in 90 degree weather. That's about it. I don't know, everyone could, there's nothing wrong with it, it's fine, just do it the way you want to do it. There's positives and negatives about any like, you know, musical movement or any kind of uh, genre at any point in time. The same arguments that were going on when I was like 13 going to shows are still happening today. You're going to have dickheads in any kind of genre and you're going to have amazing people trying to do the right thing and that's going to continue to be the cycle as long as this music exists. So. You know, there's always going to be good points and bad points. It's up to the individual whether they focus on the good points or the bad points and be a positive influence or a negative influence. So we choose to be a positive influence and not talk about the negative shit. Um, I miss a lot of my hair. Um, I don't know. I don't miss too much. I enjoy I like to live in the now. I don't like to be, like, dwelling too much on the past. I like, there's a lot of things that I've look back very favorably and very fondly like but like I at the same time like I still think the present is very exciting and the future has a lot to fucking you know to give us as well so I don't want to dwell too much on the past yeah I think I had a had a good run so I de definitely miss shit like but it's not nothing I can't do anymore you know nothing I can't not do anymore if that makes sense yeah, I had a, I had a pretty good run a little fortunate I've been doing this since I'm like 16, like touring since I'm like 18. I worked in a fruit and veg. I had like a very short lived bar job. I did some telemarketing work in between touring. Um, yeah, I've just been pretty much touring. It's like, even if it wasn't like actually making me enough money to live off, I still just lived on tour and survived how I could. So I've done like a little, you know, a little bit here and there. Worked for my dad, like put up sheet roofing and did shit like that to get by. But music's been pretty much all I know as far as like an actual uh yeah the only employment that I know is music yeah. same I did the side jobs and shit too concrete and fencing and work at a bar and all that shit but I've been on tour since I'm 18 as well I think that they put in the spotlight so much that people think that they're not human and that that they can't have fucking feelings and, and I think sometimes when when someone in a better position than you or you know in the public eye even tries the vent and they sometimes they don't have that outlet because people just think that oh he had it so easy or whatever and you know it's like you everyone has their own story and I think that I think that affects creative people way more as, as well because it's just I don't know I mean I think that a lot of people that are creative and musicians and not everybody but I know a lot of people that are like particularly introverted but obviously being yeah like obviously being like a performer is a more extroverted job so you have to be in the public eye you have to perform and part of that is like meeting people on a daily basis constantly all the time you're surrounded by people so being an introverted person that wants to just create and make music but also having to like back that up and touring all year round and being in front of people and meeting people it can be very taxing and it might like take you out of your element constantly so i think that can be like something that drives people into a place that you know tips them over the edge sometimes it's tough it's like you know it's not as easy as it seems Uh, not particularly because you got to set them up and you got to pack them down and you got to like hit them real hard for like an hour every night. But I like, I, I enjoyed playing drums, but I did it for, you know, like I said, like I started touring when I was 16 or started playing when I was 16, touring when I was 18. Did that on drums for a long time and then went back and forth between these nuts and my old band for quite a while. So like I definitely did my fair share of drumming and as much as it was enjoyable, um, I, I have my fill and then you know, on to different things. I like to keep it moving, I like to keep progressing, I don't like to stay on the one thing. Bring, give me all the sponsors then. I don't give a fuck. Give them to me. I'll take them all. 
but for what reason? Because you get like a case of free fucking energy drink, then you're not a hardcore band. Try touring all year round and fucking living off the skin of your ass and like really doing it fucking hard and then trying to turn down like a free case of water or a free case of beer or a free case of anything. Like it's real easy to judge from a desk job and be like, oh shit, you're a sellout because you got something for free. Nah, like it's easy to make that judgment when you're living very comfortably and watching bands from a fucking distance. When you're living the life and you're actually doing this shit day in and day out, then you'll take a little help where you can get it. That's the reality. You know, they don't see, they don't know the behind the scenes of that. Like, Monster is a huge, a huge contributor to hardcore. Like, yeah, they, they put, they pump so much money into these bands that, that older bands that still want to do it or younger bands that need the money, you know? And for the record, they don't give us anything. So we're not saying this shit because we're like paid to say it. We like, decided yeah. not to anymore. But just because other bands want to rock with fucking like any kind of sponsor, that's their fucking personal choice. Mind your business. Asshole. <laughs> Asshole, scumbag, piece of shit, dickhead. Uh, the. The asshole, piece of shit, dickhead, scumbags. Yeah, I concur. And other things I can't say on camera. I heard he's sponsored by Monster. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm optimistic because I have a son. But if I was by my, if I was just myself, I'm pretty pessimistic. When you have kids, you're in a position where like you have to be optimistic and you have to try and make a brighter future. As corny as that may sound, but like you're in a position where what's left behind for your kids is like kind of in your hands like when it's just you you can be a little more selfish but when you've got kids to look out for like you have to be optimistic about the future you don't want to just be like fuck it like let the world fucking fall to pieces you want to try and do your part to make it like a better future so yeah. what is it called Oh, it sounds familiar. Yeah, it sounds mad familiar. The last time we came to this, or maybe the first time we Did came. Did Alex to give us that? No, I, I've definitely, I've definitely okay. had it. Sorry, I've, I've definitely had it. But uh, I could. Does it taste like peaches? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Plum. Yeah. Yeah. It fucking. It's. It fucks you up. I heard if you drop, if you just, if you don't drink, you just put like a little tea drop, tear drop in your ass, you get fucked up. Yeah. Like you, if you do it anally.